Hello, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, I want to share an interview that I did with my friend Jose Torres, who is a young entrepreneur that scales brands to seven, eight, and even nine figures. This guy's an absolute beast. For the past few months, he's been doing on some stores over a million dollars a month. So I decided to get him on here and ask him some questions that would help us not only learn some things, but also understand that there's no sub blueprint for success. I love when I hear different stories of people doing things unconventionally and still achieving a high amount of success. We talked about how to launch products, how to scale products, some of the best practices for actually finding products that scale really well, and a whole range of things. We talked about his morning routine. He actually wakes up at noon, which is pretty unconventional. And overall, this was an incredibly valuable conversation. So if you wanna support more conversations like this, make sure you check out all the links in the description. Start your Shopify store with their referral link in there. And also check out some of Jose's links. I'll link them in the description as well. And without further ado, let's get right into the interview. But yeah, waking up at like, five, or no, you wake up at 11 now, 11.30, and you go to bed at like 5 a.m., 5, 6. Yeah. So I'm waking up like at 12 exactly. And um, I'm waking up at like, Waking up at 12, sleeping around like one, around five or six in the morning. And I just got used to have been at it for like five, five years now. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I'm trying to, I'm going to switch the schedule again. It's, it's, uh, I don't like the morning schedule, but I'm going to have to just for like health benefits. Mm. So, yeah. That's so cool though. I, like, I, I love when I hear people doing like really different things because it's so easy to get caught up in like, there's this set way to do something. But like, for example, with you. Um, and I'll get, we'll get more into like your backstory and everything, but I know, for example, on Instagram, you're always posting like million dollar months and just yeah. like crazy <laughs> stuff. So I'm like, okay, all that stuff is BS, right? Like now that I hear this, I'm like, wow, that's so, that's so cool. But if you wouldn't <laughs> mind, I guess that's a great place to start, bro. So Jose Torres, that's your name. We met at, uh, Noah's event. That was pretty oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, that, that was, was awesome. awesome. Uh, so can you maybe, I guess, just to fill my audience in, my community, maybe give us a quick elevator introduction of you? Yeah, I'll make something, you know, pretty quick and short. Um, so I started maybe this e-commerce journey seven years ago. Um, you know, I was in, um, I think I was in pretty much going to college freshman year and I saw Ty Lopez's course, you know, here in my garage video. I don't know if you guys remember that. Uh, maybe on, I know, but that's a video that caught me into SMMA, social media marketing agency. And uh, he was just pitching me on like, hey, you can make your own, your service-based business mm -hmm. and get local clients like restaurants and like uh, clubs, which I did. I got like a, a, a restaurant, uh, some clubs. And then from there, I did, that, I did that for a year and then, which I liked it, but then I transitioned into e-commerce just because mm -hmm. I saw you know, at the time, to be honest, I wasn't a, I wasn't like more like outgoing, like this is like I wasn't the guy to go in public. Here's my free audit. You know, you should do business with me. I was more like an introvert at the time. So I'm like, you know what? E-commerce is perfect for me. I, I can just stay in my fr freaking room right. and just work. what I'll do that anytime <laughs> all day. So I decided to do that. And I started to, you know, have success with with my first store where we sold like the scratch off map. I don't know if you guys remember that. Uh, that went super viral. Uh, me and my uh, partner, Brandon, did really well with it. And then from there, I just kind of started getting clients and clients. And as I got more clients, I'm like, oh, shit, I have an agency now. Yeah. Um, so kind of blended really, the two in a way, like yeah. SMMA and then yeah, SRD it, Comp, blended together. It opened, yeah, it opened doors for me to meet people that have like, you know, uh, that have similar mindsets like me. So I'm like, dude, that opened the door for, for me to, to grow as a person. And, you know, I looked up to Ty Lopez so much, bro, because he taught me a lot of sales psychology, how to close and, and everything. Right. Um, I got so good to the point where my buddy asked me, hey, do you want to work with Ty Lopez? I'm like, what? Hell yeah. So, so remember, he bought like Dress Barn, Radio Shack. Yeah. Yeah. Things. Pottery uh, Barn or yeah, it was uh, Dress Barn. Dress uh, Barn. Radio yeah. Shack. Yeah. I remember but, that. And, he went on a huge spree. Was, so I ended up uh, actually doing ads for those brands and um, I, I got no to experience, way. you know, yeah. Cause I got really good at doing what I do. Oh, it's a little choppy. Uh, hold up. You of... froze for a second. Yeah, let me plug in, my, plug in my, my charger. So, um, so yeah, the guy, my buddy that is, was a CEO for a different company. CMO, so I'm just plug it in. Oh, you good? 
Okay, so we're good now? All right. Yep. My buddy's, hey, do you want to work with Tom? I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. I'm down. So from there, I started to really gain a lot of experience with spending a lot of money, like 100K a days, doing $5 million runs, you know? So uh, that's one of the reasons why I got really good at what I do is because I was able to spend 200K a days on those accounts, right? Like I gained a lot of experience did that for a year and a half. And then from there, you know, he went for one house. I did my own stuff, started to do my own agency and my own brand. Now here I am doing $1 million a month, like, like it's nothing, right? right. So that's pretty much how I got to, to the point where I'm at. Um, oh, my, let me go, let me backtrack real quick. So sure. when I was five time with this program, I was broke. So I told my mom, can I borrow a thousand bucks? She goes, well, I use, I use some persuasion on her. She agreed. <laughs> Already learning. Yeah. And uh, now I'm paying her bills. You know what I mean? So Damn. that's, that's a congrats, man. That was a good investment for her, I guess. hundred percent. She invested in her son and uh, her son's not paying her bills. And she's chilling. Damn, that's beautiful, bro. That's amazing. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's pretty much keep it as short. Yeah. That's a great introduction. I love it. I actually had no idea about almost any of that. So yeah, we didn't get to talk too much, I guess, at Noah's event, but no, you, know, you were saying, you know, you got like, 40 clients and you got all these things. Oh, I'm like, holy shit, this guy's actually, can you were like, yeah, you weren't like outspoken or anything, you know, you were just like doing your thing. So yeah. it was just really interesting. I came out of that event thinking like, wow, sometimes the people that look like they're just like the like most successful person ever are just getting like completely lapped by people that are just, you know, chill that you don't really, uh, you know, think too much about it. That I find that so interesting, bro. Oh yeah, you'd be surprised, man. It's always the quiet guy sometimes. And it's always the guy that's just doesn't care about like presence, you know, doesn't yeah. care about being the center of attention. Some people do, and that's okay. That's not a problem. Right. I just feel like, you know, this is why I'm always a student of the game, whether you're above me or you're below me. I can you can always learn from someone you know. Yeah. So now you let me ask you, let me kind of be sort of like my audience member right now. I'm trying to think, okay, like what would they really want to know from you since you're obviously now running ad spends to like the 100k mark but i'm sure you're also you're also helping other people get their start and learn how to scale for example am i right yeah yeah so i mean we have a we have a discord you know where people can join in and if, if they want to learn how to scale to like how i scale i'm talking about like 10k days 30k days but consistently right um, I think that's the value that I provide for this community is like understanding how to scale to, to a bigger position, you know, and the way I look at it, it's, it's just like the gym, right? You go to the gym, you're working out and, and, you know, you're looking good, right? You're working out, you're eating well, but then you look at the other person that's working out really fucking hard and you see it when you look at him, right? Yeah. He's focused, dedicated. Um, you know that he's there seven, seven days, uh, you know, three dollars a day, seven days out of the week. That is, that's, that is, uh, that's, that is who I am in the econ space. Mm. I am the guy that fucking pushes it. And I am the guy that teaches people that you can also do 30K a days, one, one million per month. And I help you guys understand how to do it. Cause it's because one is mindset, believing that you can do it. Um, and because when you scale that to those big numbers, those numbers, bro, you feel like this feeling of like un uncertainty, like, dude, what if it fucks up? What if that that's okay? You're supposed to feel that way. Right. So I think that's a good people, sign. Yeah, it's a good sign. So I teach people, you, you got to be in the zone of uncomfortable and you got to go hard. Okay. So Discord is where it kind of like I share that information uh, on pushing people to the next level. So that's kind of like who I am overall as a person. Honestly, everything I do, I got, I go hard. Oh, oh God. That's my, is that your Discord? Or is, I, was, I just, I just, uh, oh, that, that was a huddle on that's Slack. Huddle. Nice. Huddle with now right now we're in, we're doing an important call right now. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, let can I so I'll ask you a little bit about the scaling then cuz that's really interesting, but I also want to kind of go a little bit from the 0 to 1. Do you mind if we start sort of at like let's say somebody that's just started their business, just started their e-commerce store, maybe drop shipping, maybe it's a brand, whatever it is, maybe even a software, who knows. What would you do to someone like that to get them started with paid ads, for example, or is that even not what you would suggest? Like maybe TikTok organic, what, what do you think? 
you know, there's there's multiple ways to go about it, right? One, do you have money to spend? Do you have three to ten thousand dollars to spend? If the answer is yes, Facebook. Facebook more is the most consistent platform that I overall over all the platforms that I look at. Mm -hmm. Number two, if you don't have a lot of money, you can go with the organic TikTok route. However, that is great, but you're gonna see a lot of inconsistency because it's just how it that's just how TikTok organic is. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the Facebook paid side, okay? Um for me, it's always going to be, do you have enough content to test on Facebook? So you have to be a person that understands how to capture attention. You have to know your audience. And you have to know what your audience wants. Mm -hmm. So let's say, for example, you're starting from scratch, uh, whether it's a drop shipping or, or, you know, any type of tool that you're trying to sell, uh, SaaS, then first understand what are the problems that, you, that your customer is going through. What I like to do is I go to Amazon and I like to do some research. What so I look for a product that's very similar to mine, and I go scroll down the, down to the reviews, and I look at the reviews that has the most votes, and then that gives, that's called CI. CI is collective information, right? Which is more powerful than AI, actually. The reason being is because you have a group of people that agree that this product works well because of X. Let's say, for example, we're selling a, um, a product that relieves back pain. This person says, "I love this product because it brightens up my day." And I have and I have such a better experience. Did you see her words? It burdens up my day and have a better experience. Experience and Brian, these, these are keywords. Yeah. So now in your ad, you got to make sure that the person who's making who is making the UGC that she says this brightens up my day and I have a better experience. It makes my days way easier. I enjoy it. She's not saying my bag is relief. No, she's not saying that. She's saying what it does. So now that you guys have this collective information, you can then put it in ChatGPT and say, ChatGPT, make me three different copies for a Facebook ad, and then, but make sure that you use the keywords that, that this review has. Damn, bro. Right? Boom, powerful. Then you take this and say, hey, ChatGPT, can you make me three scripts for a, an influencer I'm trying to make ads? So now you're, you're talking in the language of your customer. That is far more important than these hacks of like how to do Facebook ads. That is important. It's like a car without gas. But you mm -hmm. need the gas, right? It's like a Ferrari and gas. They need each other. Right. So it is important that you guys do your research first. And then once you have that, you're going to be one of the best markers because you understand how to capture attention. And number two is make sure that, th that these words are also in the sales page because it's it's a correlation. It's everything is aligned together. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons why I'm able to do what I do is because I understand sales psychology and understand how to talk to my customer. Once you understand that, then you can do Facebook ads and then you can do, you know, the, uh, I can talk about it. Um, my testing strategy is five ads, you know, CBO, excuse me, ABO, five ads, it's $20 each, one ad set, one different ad set per interest. And then you're testing like at least three different videos. That's kind of how I start. Mm, okay. Then, Just interest yeah. testing, $20 a day. Yep. $5. And then from there, you, you know, you'll get to, you know, thousand dollars in spend, $3,000 in spend after that gradually. But you must focus on capturing attention. That is the, that is way that's more, brilliant, way more. bro. That's yeah. a really great explanation. Like I'm sure that's gonna help a lot of people out because, like you said, it's like the customer is telling you what they the reasons that they bought the product and how it made them feel, and that's just incredibly powerful. If you can convey that like congruently on your ad, you know, landing page, yeah. maybe even in your emails after, like to get better yeah. reviews. Like that's so yeah. smart, bro. I love it's, that. Oh, think about, think about like, okay, there's a reason why people look at like Kim Kardashian show, right? There's a reason why people look at all these different shows that capture their attention. Mm -hmm. If you notice, it's anything that has drama that's dramatic or that has something negative, right? Um, so there's some positive things too, but drama was, will always get more attention. So your job is to look at these ads as like mini little dramatic shows, right? You know, this is why the more emotion in that has, the better it's going to convert. Um, so now that I look at things in a way where these are mini shows, I'm creating mini shows. Mm -hmm. That's my perspective, right? You are other director of a little mini show, little mini clip, and you have to really be good at it to capture, to capture people's attention. Once I master that, I'm like, bro, this is it. I can scale, you yeah. know? And then um, when it comes to actually launching those ad sets, let's say you see some promising results, you'll gradually scale to 1k a day, but is that in still like interest testing? I, I mean, like, are you just duplicating it, increasing the budget? Yeah. Like, yeah. I'll explain transitioning from testing into like, uh, I call it test scale into the actual scaling. All right. Mm -hmm. Now I move in phases. And I think that the most important part guys is that you need to make sure 
that you crack the code of spending a hundred bucks a day and being profitable. If you crack this, if you crack this, you're, it's going to be really easier for you to scale, right? This is the hardest point. Starting is one of the hardest point and you, this is something that you must master. So anyways, so we tested five interests, right? Mm -hmm. And we have ads in that campaign. Um, the whole point of this test is to find at least two or three different winning ad interest and find at least two winning ads. One or two winning ads, okay, for now. And But the question is, what is the winning ad? Well, it is going to be three interests that has five more purchases at a 3x ROAS. Once you find that, you can, and also the videos, the, the ad has to have five or more purchases at a 3x ROAS, right? So your break even ROAS is a 1.8. Um, once you have that, then you can take that into you can take that into a scaling campaign. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is you make a new campaign. You do uh, you do CBO fifty dollars CBO, and you um, put the first interest, and you stack up the three different winning interests, and that one ads out. You stack them up together, and then you make sure that you have the own, the winning videos inside that ad set. Right? Hopefully that gives you guys a visual. Yeah. After that, you want to duplicate the ad set four more times. Now you have five different ad sets in that fifty dollars CBO. Uh, and the videos are all the same. They're all winners. That is called a test scale campaign. And then you want to duplicate the campaign two more times. So I have three campaigns at $50 each. And now we're kind of seeing if, if, it can, if we can find some consistency with this campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we can, then the next day I do an ABO. Uh, and it's, it's the same, same stacked interest. Now I'm doing five ads. It's at $50 each, which means we're spending now an additional $50 per five times 50 is uh, $250. Mm -hmm. It's spent. Now we're doing that. So that's kind of like the, the test, the test scale phase. And now we're spending like an additional of, uh, you know, maybe three, four hundred dollars a day. And if we're profitable with that, then we can move on to like the actual scaling phase. Wow, dude, that's actually very clever. I mean, I love the idea of, you know, you take your winning ad interest and then you put them all stacked in one ad set CBO. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah. And then with all your winning ads and then duplicating that interest with all those stacked, uh, that ad set with all those stacked interests four more times so that you have these like super interest ad sets. Exactly. Damn, bro. That's so yeah, interesting. Exactly. And it, the, one, the way I look at it, bro, is that we are not marketers. We're a sci we are scientists, right? Mm -hmm. we're, we're scientists that just market because we are we test one thing. The, the reason why I'm doing this is because we're, we are testing one thing at a time. So for example, now that you have your winning interest, you can then also test the videos. And when you test the videos, you're doing it against your winning interest. Why? Because the main focus is going to be the ads. You don't want to test new interests and new ads together because now you're testing two things, but you don't, but what if, if it doesn't work out? You're not going to know why it's not working out. Exactly. And what if you working at a time, right? And you test one, you know, let's say for example, you have winning videos, winning videos, and you test new interests to those winning videos. Well, the whole focus is the interest. Right. So your whole goal as a marketer is to, to keep getting, I call it like being like a river mm -hmm. instead of like a pond or, you know, a lake where it's not the lake just stays still. A pond just stays still. It rots. A, 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 a river is thriving and pushing and moving. Yeah. If you're out of, you know, thriving and pushing and moving, your account is going to tank. So be a river and constantly always test interest and ads. And then you take those into a scaling, uh, into a test scale campaign. And if that works, then you can start putting like in a big cap and a cost cap, which is a lot of things that I talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can scale more aggressively, right? So that's kind of like the face. This may take you a month. This may take you two months, but eventually you're doing 10K per day, 30K per day because of the process. Right. Yeah. You're like building that momentum, that snowball. How would you say that's impactful? Because for example, a lot of people will get banned and, you know, what do you, do you, to get back to that momentum? Do you just scale right back to where you were before? Um, or how do you go about that? So when people get banned, right? That when that happens, dude, momentum, momentum, the word is such like a powerful word it because what, because what happens is when you have momentum, every, every, everything's going great, bro. You're excited, you're scaling, you're making a lot of money. And then boom, out of kind goes down. Momentum's dead. So now it's like, it's like you climb on top of the mountains, you sweat, you know, you sweat and you put in the work. And then when your your ad account gets a bad, it's like you're pushed off to the bottom of the mountain again. Now you have to build it up. However, you're tired already. So what happens is the ad account doesn't respond the same. So you lost your momentum. You have to rebuild it. When that happens, bro, uh, to be honest, it's like we just kind of reset from scratch. Mm -hmm. We use what we already have and we'll see. If we can <clears throat> it may take another week, another two weeks or a month. But at that point, if you're having a tough time to kind of make it work again, 
that's when I start testing like different offers, right? Something that a lot of people don't look at testing offers. Um, so let's say for example, you're selling a product that costs you $10 and you're charging $39.99, which gives you a $30 margin. Maybe you can do $34.99 and see what happens. You know, would that give you an extra edge, you know, opposed to your competitor? Or can you get the product cheaper for maybe like five dollars? Well, not if it's five dollars, now you can do um, twenty nine ninety nine, and hopefully that can uh, get you a cut in X, you know, mm-hmm. cut in X, because now people are like, oh, this is such a great offer. So then I start looking at playing around with offers, the sales page when this does happen, because it kind of makes a big difference in a sense of like, if you guys today, my biggest recommendation, if you're having a tough time right now, like getting your conversion rate up because of whatever issue happened, that account got bad. Try messing with your offer, decrease it by $5 or $10 and see what kind of reaction happens. Typically, you get an instant reaction, which is why I love testing offers. Mm. And is that the first offer you'll test is just a decrease in price? And then do you have like offers you test to increase average order value, for example? Yeah. So, you know, um, you could do like a buy one, get one free. For example, mm-hmm. let's you well the answer is well, how is that well there's two two ways buy one give one free or add some upsells right uh but typically for me um you know if it's a drop shipping store buy one give one free is my to go to offer mm. if it's a brand store i'm gonna try to do some upsells just because brand stores don't like to do uh you know offers like that but anyways let's talk about buy one give one free so let's say for example you're selling something that's 49.99 and you have a you know 30 dollar margin right uh, so 20, it costs you twenty dollars. You're paying for, and you're charging forty nine ninety nine. However, when people when when you send two products, it's not an additional twenty bucks. It's usually like thirty dollars, right? Mm-hmm. So I sell two items to one customer for thirty dollars because that's how much it costs to send them to their to their uh, location. So now you have a cost of thirty. Typically, I'll, I'll add like thirty more dollars, and I'll have so now I'm not I'm not gonna you can you can increase the price from forty nine ninety nine to maybe like sixty nine ninety nine. Now you have a forty dollar margin. And you can see how that does for you. Or you can even do $79.99. Now you have a bigger margin to see if people will buy a BOGO at $79.99. Now you're making an additional $10 more and your margin's bigger. So I do mm-hmm. go that route as well, which I highly recommend because these are the biggest offers or the biggest reasons why we do the $1 million per month. Really? Okay. Yeah. It's just the offer and the creative, obviously, like you it's were mentioning. Great. It's a mix of everything, but typically... Yeah. Again, like it's like a gas without a, a Ferrari without a, without gas, right? It's yeah. not going to run. So, you know, we make sure that we have both and we make sure that we put in the full effort on all, on all the aspects of marketing. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, man. That's so interesting. And you're applying these same concepts to then the clients that you're working with at the agency side of things, right? Yeah. So we're applying pretty much everything. And again, it's like we move step by step and, uh, you know, uh, sometimes we track things fast and sometimes it takes a little bit longer because mm-hmm. we're doing, think about a tool belt, right? You have a tool belt and uh, whenever you come across a problem, we got to make sure that we use all of our tools. And once we use our tools that, let's say for example, we there's we have a offer problem, a conversion rate problem or ad account problem. We have 10 tools for each problem. Mm-hmm. Now we use all of them, right? And and uh, sometimes it may take longer, but as long as we use all of them, eventually we'll, we'll find the answer, the solution. And if we don't, we might have to like pivot into maybe like a different product. But typically we find the solution because we have 10 different tools. So that's something that a lot of people here do not have. They, they Their mindset is like, I have three tools. Ad doesn't work. Product doesn't work. Move on. That is that is the problem, bro, mm-hmm. is that you need to have more tools and you apply these tools, right? Which is offer testing, creative testing, uh, strategy testing, just a, a variety of different things. And um if, if you don't have these you know, tools and, and if you don't understand it because you don't, you just don't have the knowledge for it, you're going to fail. So this is why knowledge is important. Applied knowledge is important. Mm-hmm. So definitely learn from people that, you know, that have more tools than you and then start applying these tools to your problems. And you're going to see that you're going to succeed because the more you test, the more you do, the faster you test, the closer you get to the, to the, to the W. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. And I guess with that, it also does take capital and money in order to even perform these tests in the first place. That is a that's pretty much a fact. Yes, um, you do need capital, and um, not a lot. It, it's just that, I mean, the, the longer the the time frame of testing goes, the more money you'll need. Yeah, but the shorter it is, the the less money you need. So this is why, if you guys are having a problem, you know, test your offers first because that's going to be a quick change overnight. 
you know yeah so I do look at it, I do look, at, I do look at it like that so I'm now curious a little bit about you mentioned for example at the very beginning which I thought was so clever is looking at Amazon you know reviews and votes for example to see like the wording and and then using that plugging it into chat GPT I'm just curious sounds like you guys are already on top of AI for what you're doing in, in e-commerce how how are you guys using AI right now when it comes to your business? So that's the way kind of how I explain it to you is definitely the, one of the best ways we use AI mm. is uh, just combining CI uh, and AI together. Uh, we don't use AI just for AI alone. So CI can collect the information mm. um, and we combine it together to, to make, to make a, um, you know, copy for our ads that can increase our CTR. And you'd be surprised, bro. Uh, if you can increase your CTR, unique CTR on, on ads by like a 0.5, it's a lot when you're spending a lot of money. And, and it does help us out shorten that time, right? It used, to be, it used to take us maybe like an hour, two hours. Now we're doing that in five, 10 minutes, right? So now we're saving time. Number two, you know, when it comes to UGC, we'll, we'll tell it, hey, make us some scripts. I'll make us scripts based on CI, click information, right? Um, based on the reviews that we're getting from Amazon. Mm-hmm. We can put it together. And honestly, that's kind of like the main main thing we do right now when it comes to AI, I know there's like creatives and stuff like that as well, but we're kind of not doing that, but this is, this is how we're using it. And I think it's been the best thing ever, to be honest, because we're now <laughs> taking me an hour to collect information and then make scripts. Now, again, it's taking me five minutes. I love that too. Yeah. I've been seeing also for customer service, it's really helpful for reps to use whenever you're trying to like, let's say like diffuse a situation oh. in a certain way, like, it's amazing, bro. I agree. I think it's such an awesome change. So that's why I was curious because it I'm sure it's yeah. encouraging for people you know to know. Now that you mentioned that, that is really smart. So one of my uh managers here at, at Revenue Express, you know, she's like, Hey, this client's like kind of you know freaking out, you know, with this problem. I'm like, is it okay if I send this? I'm like, hold up, put that into chat GBT, make sure the grammar's proper and become more sentimental. So make it more sentimental with chat chat GBT. <laughs> And it's back to my, this is great. So now she's using it, you know, when it comes to like communicating with clients and, and things like that. So that's definitely another way, another way around when it comes to like calming someone's emotions down when they're like kind of freaking out for, any, you know, a type of problem that sometimes they, you know, we have to come across with. That's another way that we use it too. Interesting. Uh, what were you going to say? Uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, because I, I have another question uh, that's a little bit more so about meta ads, because I'm guessing meta ads seems to be kind of like the, is that your bread and butter, you would say? Is that, is uh, that where you're mainly spending? I would say, yeah, that's going to that's gonna be number one. We do we do Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, Pinterest, and Google, right? Oh, shit, um, okay. That's a lot. We do, we do all five platforms. And I'm telling you, bro, if you have these five platforms on your, on your uh, store, you're going to do 30K per day. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyways... But meta is number one, always. Yeah, that makes sense. So how, let's say, because what I see a lot too that happens is inconsistencies when you're trying to scale. Does it help maybe for you to have like a percentage of money at like spending on, let's say, testing, a percentage on scaling, and then a percentage on retargeting? Like, just, is that how you guys do it? Yeah, so you want like 70% of to top of the funnel and you want maybe uh, 20% on testing and then 10 percent on on a bottom of the funnel right that's kind of how we allocate our budgets and some but here's a here's the here's the thing bro sometimes you also have to see how your account works right Mm -hmm. so the way i teach everybody on discord or you know people around me is like you have to react based on how your account reacts it's like a girlfriend (laughs) every girlfriend you know she may like flowers but she may not like flowers she might want a teddy bear more right so every ad account is different. So like sometimes some accounts prefer 50% top of the funnel, 30% bottom of the funnel and 10% testing or 30% testing, uh, six, 60% top of the funnel and 10% um, remark- remarketing. Or maybe I'm <laughs> but, That's yeah. such a funny analogy, bro. An ad account is like a girlfriend. <laughs> bro. True. Shut down. Uh, you know, so she kills the mood. Yeah. So, <laughs> Sometimes uh, it's like perfect. It's like nice. I was like, oh, we're, go- we're going. Oh, this is a good week, man. Thank yeah. you. You know, <laughs> it is, bro. It gives you the different emotions. That's what it is. So I learned to really understand that, and it helped me. Um, it helped me understand like not every method will work on the same ad account, same girlfriend. Yeah. You have to be- this is why I'm like, well, let me first learn you, 
let me try everything that I can and we'll see what works. Yeah, no, that's a great scientific approach. I mean, I, I think that's, I love that you mentioned that even at the beginning, uh, that was a good analogy too. Like, you know, we're more scientists than we are marketers because ultimately yeah. when you're driving paid traffic, you have to be like a scientist. Yeah. And, and that is the biggest reason why you're, you're people that see themselves as scientists, you know, that's the biggest reason why you're going to succeed above the people that, are, that don't think they are right. I'm just a mm -hmm. media buyer. No, bro. You're the media buyer. You're the marketer. You're the scientist. It's all about like, you know, you can be good at something, bro, but also like your mindset is like, you have to be the guy, bro. You got to be the best of the best. You got to be the guy that sends out always. And that is another factor, right? Of why, you know, we're good at what we do, bro. It's because I push the people. I, it's like, you know, again, you're at the gym. I'm making sure I push everybody to do more weight, to do more. And that is a factor that is important uh, for us as a team to have that in our leadership. Right. That makes total, total sense. I really like that analogy too of the guy at the gym, because I'm sure that's relatable to everybody, especially since most people are not that guy at the gym, but you see that guy at the gym that you're talking yeah. about, the one that's just like locked in, like yeah. pushing crazy weights and just, you know, trying his best. And that, I mean, that motivates everyone else as well. So I think that's great leadership. Yeah, hundred percent. I think it's important, bro. And you ask yourself when you go, damn, he's pretty big. Um, damn, but maybe that'll be me one day. Maybe, maybe you said, maybe no, that will be you one day. Go talk to him. Go talk to that guy. Hey, bro, what can I do? What can I learn? Go talk to the guy that's the greatest Facebook marketer, the greatest Snapchat marketer. Hey, bro, can I, can I learn something from you, you know, and implement. And I always been that type of guy to be hungry and always ask questions. You know, uh, for example, you know, our call that we have, in, bro, I know it's a lot of information said. And what I recommend is like, you know, even for you or even for somebody listening to this to this um, podcast is write down three things that you learned today and implement and take action. Because if you guys want to get to the next level, it's only by taking action. But there's a lot of information said. But if you do these three things, guarantee you that you're going to see a difference. And that is, that is the biggest problem that people, holy shit, he said 10,000 10, 10, 10, things. But bro, write three, write three things down and take action. Yeah, I love that advice, bro. I think that's such like that's so relevant to so many people because especially since we have so much information yeah. more than ever it's like so yeah. easy to get analysis paralysis of like your journey yeah. but taking small steps is so powerful yeah bro and that is and you know I look I, I speak like that because i look back at myself where like i was getting a lot of information and i'm like dude what the fuck do i do so mm -hmm. it is important that you guys make sure that you do three things whenever you learn from somebody take three things from that person and write it down, something that interests you and take action on it. And then, and then as a scientist, you're gonna write down, this is the results that I got, you know? And then you're gonna either gonna, you know, either did work or it didn't work, but you're gonna analyze why it didn't work and you're gonna analyze why it did work. And that is, you know, what you need to do to become a master at, the, at this craft. Love that. Now, this is a little technical and it's just out of curiosity really, but do you find that certain days of the week perform better than others on Meta? 100%, bro. So we manage 30 agency clients, and then I started to do coaching, right? Mm -hmm. And we managed like 100 clients, right? Because I managed, I coached two agencies, and I coached maybe 30 people. And a combination of that is like 100 wow. plus. Now, which is kind of easy to manage uh, 100 stores when you're coaching, right? Because it's not, I'm just, you do this, do that, right? It's real simple. Yeah. So um, I noticed that with all the accounts that some accounts perform better starting either from Wednesday, Thursday, all the way up till Sunday. So Monday and Tuesday are not the best. Do you experience that too? Yeah, yeah. That's exactly why I asked because I thought I was going crazy. And like sometimes people think I'm crazy when I say things like that. But that's what we see too, bro. Like some ad accounts like Mondays, for example, are just yeah. historically bad. Like they're just never good. And then other yeah. accounts like you know, Friday, Sunday, it's like popping off and crazy. Yeah. And knowing so, that is helpful for scaling, I think. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure you prepare right for those days where you're like, okay, I'm gonna scale on the days that are doing best and I'm gonna not spend so much money on the days so that do worse. Is that what, what you do? Yeah, yeah, more or less. And, or just kind of tough it out sometimes, just like kind of like, I think the biggest deal of that is like the morale decrease. You know, everybody gets bummed out if it's like not a good day. Yeah. But it's like, I think it's good to, it's like to just kind of take a step back and be like, well, 
hey, historically, this is just not a good day. So tomorrow's a new day, you know, yeah. and we can so, make it better. You know, what I, you know what I call it? I call it, today's an off day. Yeah. Today's an off day. What's that mean? It's just, it is what it is, bro. We're going to, I'm going to reduce the spend a little bit, but I'm not going re- to reduce it to the point where we're making a lot. Like, let's say, for example, Sunday's the best. It's a really great day. We're netting 25%. Monday, it's probably not going to be the best. Mm-hmm. And our net is 25 to 10%. However, does my spend stay the same? I kind of tend to keep the spend the same, right? But if it's going below 10%, I'll reduce it a little bit. The reason being, bro, is because you still want to be the person that has like priority in the algorithm. Mm. Um, so I do believe in bullying people out. So if you're the person that's spending a lot more money and you're increasing somebody else's CPA, right? That means that that person may kill their ass for Tuesday, Wednesday. So now because that happened, you're going to get the more priority, which means you're going to get a cheaper CPA when Wednesday or Thursday comes around. So the bully method does work. So tr- test it out. One day it's like, you know what? I know Monday and Tuesday are going to be the worst, but let me kind of keep the spend the same. Just don't go below like, you know, 7% net profit. Mm-hmm. What happens? That's awesome, bro. Yeah. I think it's also part of like keeping the momentum going, right? Like you talked about how important that is and yeah. It, yeah. that's a good way to do it. Yeah, exactly. Keeping the momentum going. That that war is such fucking like, I wish like there's magic just popping out of my, my screen right now. When I say momentum, it just pops at you because that word is what people need to continue, continue to do good consistent sales, right? Yeah. You make money, bro, but it's difficult to be consistent. And um, so what you said right now, bro, on point, on point. Hell yeah. And I, I see you at the gym all the time too. I'm sure you're cons- like, I'm guessing if I were to bet that, you know, you're consistent at probably everything else that you do too, you know? Yeah. It's like, you know, we're humans are built on habits, right? Mm-hmm. So it's, you have a good habit, you have a bad habit. So I tend to just build good habits around, you know, everything that I do and I go hard at everything. Right. So even at the gym, I'm doing a hundred reps per every machine that I touch. Right. Yeah. So hundred, hundred reps. Um, so hundred K days or, you know, hundred K, <laughs> whatever. Right. I tend to kind of do the same thing and I can, I tend to kind of push it to new levels where I'm pushing myself. So I tend to do everything that I do is like that. Right. Mm-hmm. So people say you need to have a balance in your life. No, you need to go hard. You need to have a, you need to go hundred percent at everything you do, family, the gym work, you know, whatever that you do, you got to give it your hundred percent. Let That's me ask you I- this. Yeah, this is kind of also a bit of a selfish question, but I'm just really curious because obviously you've been in business for like seven years. You've got all these different things you're doing, so I can relate to, you know, that. Um, You're definitely a boss at this point. How are you, when it comes to the money you're making, you're obviously making a lot of money. How are you, like, where are you parking that money? Or like, are you just investing all of it back into your business? Are you buying crypto, stocks, real estate? Like, what are you doing? Well, to be honest, man, I, you know, I got into crypto, took some L's there. So I got a bad taste. I learned from the L's, but I That's decided good. just to focus into e-commerce. And it, this is what I'm really good at. And uh, I can control it. I control here. I control e-commerce. That's how I look at it. So all my money is going to, uh, you know, buying brands uh, and being an investor for different brands, mm. um, getting more high level people into my company that costs maybe five figures a month. Um, that's where my money is going, you know. So for example, right now we do free coaching and, you know, and that means that I need coaches. So I started this by myself last two months ago. Uh, we help people scale to like, you know, if, if you're doing two, three K a day, we help them get to 10 K, right? Take it per day. So mm-hmm. I tell myself, now I need coaches. I'm like, all right, coaches. So I started like, you know, putting out my, my, you know, wallet. Here you go. Here you go. Help me coach. So all my money just goes back into my business, bro. Um, at the moment, you know, uh, you know, I, I do have a nice little car. That's about it. But right now, I'm just going back into my business. I don't have any other. Uh, I do have some other business ventures. Like uh, I don't know if you have, have you, you know what what a ghost kitchen is. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know through Mr. Beast. Uh, yeah, so and have, yeah, you have, have a, a ghost kitchen. A ghost kitchen launching next month. So wow, that is interesting. Some money going into that. Some little ventures like that. You know, nothing crazy, but still, e-com is my number one priority. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm good at it, but I, I don't think I've mastered it yet. So um, I w- I'm going to continue to put it back in, you know, for example, like if you look at Jeff Bezos, look how long he's been a CEO. Well, he was a CEO for like Amazon, right? For like what, mm-hmm. 20 years? Yeah. He did, right? So, you know, I'm a believer of like being focused on one thing. 
And, you know, little things on the side, but still, this is the main needle. This is the main, this is my North Star, and I'm going to double down on it. I think that's so clever, bro. And and I mean, I'm kind of trying to follow the same path, to be honest. And like, you, it's, still, it's so funny that you say, I haven't mastered e-com in your opinion when, you know, you're doing like a million a month and you're managing like probably tens of millions a month in like other people's brands and stuff. But there's always someone at a higher level. Like it's just never, it never ends, right? There's always someone to learn from. Yeah. So for me, I think, uh, I think it's always just, it's a chase, bro. You know, so, mm -hmm. um, you know, once I'm more in a comfortable, I, I don't think I'll ever be comfortable, more, but once I know like, okay, this is where I, I, I feel like I made it right. Mm -hmm. And it's instead of like big numbers, I'm impressed by myself. I want to get to that point where I'm impressed by myself of myself. And then, then I'll probably start allocating money into different ventures work that requires my time. But I've noticed that I don't like investing into something where I can put a little bit more time into it because it needs, because whenever I put my time into something, bro, it just grows faster and, 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 you know, blows up quicker. And when I put my into something where I can't, I don't have a lot of time, I've seen it not grow quick. So I'm like, okay, I need to be careful because it's about money and time mm -hmm. for me. And maybe soon enough later on, you know, I'll hire a CEO for, my agency and then I'm, I'm chilling, right? I'm, I'm in different ventures, but for now, e-com. Wow. So you're, when it comes to your agency and then your e-com brands, you're basically the, you're at the head of everything. Yeah. So right now, currently I am pretty much the head of everything. Uh, but we do have like team leaders that kind of help me out when it comes to like communication. I, what I tend to do is just limit my lines of communication, right? Let's say for example, you have 30 people in your team. I don't think you're going to talk to all those 30 people are going to go insane. Mm -hmm. So I'll have like two guys that talk to those people, right? Maybe one guy talks to 15, the other guy talks to the other 15, and they're just feeding me information of what's happening. Mm -hmm. And how do you find people you can trust like that? I mean, I, I so, feel like that's what people struggle with is, you know, finding those people without, let's say, a personal brand, because obviously having a personal brand does help. How do you do it? You know, that's a very interesting. So uh, I think I think one is usually the way I do it is like, um, number one, finding someone in, in your own hometown that is mm. driven as, as maybe has some skills, skill set into what you're doing. That's one way. And, you know, you're with them together. You can see them physically. I think that's important. Uh, and for the people that are remote, typically what I'll do is like, you know, I look at my best A players and I talk to them, hey, do you know anybody else that can come in and, you know, work with us? So typically your A player will know somebody that's not so good. So I'll talk to them and bring them in. I tried Pfeiffer. I checked up, up work, bro. You don't, you don't know how many times I try to hire people and they just do not have the if factor. The if factor is somebody that is determined and focused and that's willing to do everything that everything in their power to make sure that, you know, they're successful, which makes you successful. Um, so I find it difficult to do that. So I, instead, I just, someone in my hometown or two, look at your A players and just talk, talk to them and see if they have somebody that can bring it into the house um, that can bring value. Mm -hmm. that, that has been the by far the best way. Um, I know there's multiple different methods out there, but this is what's working for me. I've actually heard that before from other people that I know that I like look up to is, yeah, ask the, your, your best employees, ask them if they have people that they know, because chances are like you are kind of like who you surround yourself with. So chances are they're surrounding your, themselves with people that are very similar to them. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of how I do it. I mean, if you have, how do you, if you do it that way, let me know, bro. Cause uh, you know, I'm also always looking for new people. Um, <laughs> yeah. I feel but, you. I mean, my team's pretty small, but that's how I've hired basically everybody and uh, yeah. hometown. I haven't yet because everything is like remote, but I've kind of been itching to have a sort of team like near me that I can like kind of, you know, commute, like see in person. Yeah. And I feel like that's important, bro. Like remote, you just have more, way more control mm -hmm. and it's a dynamic. So this is what's important that, you know, that you actually meet up with your team at least once a year, mm. uh, have that impersonal connection because it's, it's, it's def definitely different. It builds bonds. And now you can, you can, how do I say, communicate at a different level. It's like, a again, like I was, it's like a girlfriend, right? Yeah. What happens the more you see your girlfriend, the more comfortable you get uh, and the more she'll listen to you or the more you guys work together as a team. Uh, True. And this, I look at my partnerships the same way, you know, the more I hang out with them, the more we, you know, not only, not, not only, but in business, but also out of business, you know, work, go to the gym with them or go have some dinner with them. I think that's all part of like building this bond of something strong. True. Where are you based out of, by the way? I'm in central, central uh, California. 
Oh, cool, cool. Have you right. lived there like all your life or? Yeah, yeah. So right oh, in between cool. like LA and San Francisco, um, right in the middle. And you, where are you from? I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota. So all the way up north, Midwest. Okay. Midwest, so it's like you're not in a major city, basically. Well, actually, Minneapolis is the biggest city here, but it's like uh, kind of like a low key city. Like a lot of people, it's a lot of people met, call Minnesota the Canada of the U.S. because it yeah. kind of is the Canada of the U.S. And Minneapolis <laughs> is like a mini Toronto. Okay, a lot of Canadians there, or what? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, there are, and um, Somalis, a lot of Somalis here as well, and there's a lot That's... of entrepreneurs actually oh, yeah? uh, that are building like apps and like not. Not a lot of e-commerce entrepreneurs. Well, a decent amount, I guess. Maybe I just don't know them. But I know a lot of people building apps and things like that. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I've never been there. I have to check it out. Yeah, uh, it's pretty, it's cold. I mean, it's cold right now, but it's a beautiful state in the summer. So if you're ever around, bro, like, give me a shout yeah, out. Sure, like, bro. that'd be yeah, awesome yeah. to hang out. Yeah. Um, I went to, I mean, I don't know if it's closed, right? Because I'm not, you know, familiar with East Coast. But uh, I went mm -hmm. to Tennessee, maybe Nashville. Maybe not too long ago. That was a really oh, great city. Oh, that's so nice. I've never, I've driven through it, but I've never been there. Like, actually, it looks so fun. Bro, you have to go to Nashville. It's it's an experience, you know. Um, I loved it. I loved it. Yeah, there's a lot of, like, country influence. Yeah. It's, like, super a lot cool. Of I, I mean, if you like, I like, I kind of like country, but it's also, like, an experience, right? right. So, you like country, just go check it out. It's, like, the way I saw it is, like, every every like spot was like a live concert you go you're walking into different live concerts because everybody's there doing live music Damn. and now that, that was an awesome experience i'm like oh shit i'll do this again but i went there for an event i went to uh geek out uh but it was it was cool you know i like mixing business and you know fun together yeah uh, but I, I definitely recommend it but i'm I gonna like start to going to more events bro because that that seems like a great opportunity to travel and just and yeah. meet people like you just said yeah, I like mixing both. So I'm going to the one he's having in um, Fort Lauderdale, I believe. Yeah, I don't okay. know if you're going to be there. Um, Wait, when is it? Uh, I think June 21st through 26th or 23rd to 26th. That's the date. Okay, yeah, probably. That. I mean, I'll try to be more active in the community like that because I think that, I mean, Noah's event, for example, was super fun. Like I met you, I met a whole bunch of other people that I would have probably never really met yeah. like you said it's like the connection yeah. is totally different when you meet someone in person versus just yeah. online no it's way different bro um so i tend to go on both sides of like the events right you have like your drop shipping events you have like the agency and then brands events mm -hmm. so this there's two spectrums right and i always go to every every all of them or still go to geek out you know i'm a member of a powerhouse um you know i don't know if you know josh no so he he's the owner yeah. of power uh, so I tend to go to all of them so I can learn from different mindsets, right? Because dropshipping mindset is great. We learn like little hacks on how to like do media buying and things like that. And if you would like these uh, branded events where an agency, they're teaching people to be a better agency owner, brand owner, you have a di whole different aspect of what they're, what you're learning there. Mm -hmm. when, you're the pa when you're the type of guy that learns from both spectrums, dude, it's, it's like, because these guys are usually not hanging out with here. And these guys are not usually hanging out with here. But if you're the guy that's doing everything, imagine the knowledge and the power that you have. So I definitely recommend that you go to like Geek Out or like Powerhouse um, and, and events like that. That's such good advice, bro. Because that's how I felt when I met you too. Because you're like, I, I got all these agency clients and I'm running these brands. And like, it, like you said, you're kind of, you got your hands in a little bit of everything. You probably know so many people low key, which is so powerful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just I'm a very curious person about everything, bro. And again, like I'll just take three things out of somebody and I'll apply it and learn it. I don't want to hear tell, yeah, tell me ten thousand things, but maybe one thing will it's like uh if a shoe fits, I'm aware, okay? So I love that, bro. I love simple things like that where it's like that's such yeah. a good framework, bro. Just take three things and just apply that. Like don't you don't have to do yeah. everything. No, you don't. Um, so I'm a very simple person. You know, this is where I like where I live. I live in a city that's not not really big and not really well known. And there's not a lot of e-com guys here. Um, and um, my, my schedule is simple. I go to the office and then I go to the gym at 7 p.m. And then I'm back at the office like 1030. And I'm here till six in the morning and then repeat. Right. Damn. So, um, you know, I can go to Miami, I can go to L.A. whenever I want to whenever I want to network. But I have everything right here. You know, I have my family here, too. So I'm just kind of like focused. Here. Yeah, <laughs> that's incredible. What do you is this? 
do you have any like hobbies that you do in your free time or is this your hobby your passion your everything well, this is like a game for me so this is part of like i'm just gaming every day econ building um i love but that. that obviously yeah like i'll uh, you know you know on the weekends i'll watch a movie or and throughout the day i'm, I'm working out right it's or I'm meditating sometimes. I guess these are my hobbies. Mm. Working out, meditating, and watching a movie on the weekends. So I like the, I like the whole experience of like walking into a theater and, and experience like, you know, everything oh. there. Oh, cool. So just, That's you know, interesting. Because a lot of people argue that it's kind of like a dying industry, but it, I um, agree that it is different when you see a movie at the movie theater. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's not that dying because when I go, it's pretty packed. <laughs> um, you know, I've done the whole Miami stuff. I spent, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars in Miami and, and splurged it, you know, and I'm like, this is cool. I feel like you got to do it when you get it. And then uh, and then it get it out of your system and then come back and say, like, OK, this is that was fun. But this is much more funner. Building yeah. building is way more funner than doing this. Right. The rewards of what you get from becoming successful, which is cool. But I'd rather just build. Yeah, the journey is the destination, bro. <laughs> that is that is something I have to remind myself, all right? And I think we all do. Yeah. So, with you, and that's something that I say, but I always have to remind myself of that because I do catch myself like, dude, I want to get here. I'm like, come, slow down, slow down, right? Mm -hmm. um, we'll get we'll get to that point soon. It's like achievement unlocked, but the journey is the destination, man. Damn. Okay, I want to ask you a couple more questions. I know you got, you know, I don't want to take too much of your time, but I, I just forgot to ask this. So I need to ask you, because I know that we talked a lot about meta, but the other thing that people are really into is TikTok. How would you compare the two? Are you, do you still think TikTok is like a great opportunity or? 100% bro, do not miss out on TikTok, bro. I'm talking about, okay, so just last month we did, um, we had a brand uh, for a client and uh, they were doing 30K, they did 30K, the, I think um, February. I came in, I come in for March. And we did our 300K, all TikTok, 100% TikTok, 99% TikTok, 1% Facebook. Uh, we spent like 100 bucks on Facebook, whatever. So now think about, a, okay, I like, I like using analogies. So TikTok is more like the girlfriend that changes her attitude every single day. Like, to, like today, she may be happy and tomorrow she may be upset. Now, Facebook is the girlfriend where she'll stay happy for like a straight week. And then out of the, out of, out of two times out of the month, you know, you know, when that once a month comes in, her attitude changes. Well, TikTok is like, she has that once a month every single day. So <laughs> that's how it is. So um, it's an everyday changing platform. And the best thing you want to do, and here's my advice for TikTok is, and I guess I'll start from like the beginning real quick. Mm -hmm. So when you're testing, let's say for example, you're testing, I like testing five ad sets, five ABOs, $20 a piece, three different ads, right? Similar to Facebook. Um, and I'll see what works, right? And I'll kill or I'll scale vertically throughout the day by 30% increases every two hours. Um, and then at midnight, I'll reset the budgets because what was a winner today may not may be a loser tomorrow. So a lot of people, what they do is the mistake that they make is they'll scale vertically and then they'll leave the campaigns, they'll leave the budget, the same thing for tomorrow. That is a mistake because what worked today may not work tomorrow. So my biggest advice is what worked today may not work tomorrow. You know, mm -hmm. and what works tomorrow may not work the day afterwards, which, which is why it's important that you're always returning your budgets back to where they started, and then you start to scale it up again. Um, that's my biggest advice there. And also the other biggest advice is do ABO, do CBO, ACO, and smart campaigns. I'm pretty sure you heard of smart campaigns. Mm -hmm. Smart campaigns was the way I scaled the store to 300K, 30% at profits with pure just TikTok. And it's because I was able to take smart campaigns from 200 bucks a day all the way to $10,000 per campaign. Now, there was like a threshold where $1,000 was, was a sweet spot. Mm -hmm. But you know me, I'm going to push it to limits. Yeah. So the, for the people that are starting, you know, don't push it to that point, but definitely use smart campaigns and try to scale it up. You know, every, every two hours, increase it by 50% and see what kind of results you can get. Damn. So, I mean, obviously this takes a lot more time and dedication than would Facebook, right? Where you can maybe leave it for the whole day without having to kind of change the budgets accordingly, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's just more of a platform where you have to kind of adjust a lot of things um, daily. Um, it's more platform that you have to, it's, it needs more work than Facebook. And you need constantly testing ads. Like if you can test 30 ads per week, 50 ads per week, that's how that pro platform will work. Mm -hmm. you know 
it's not about it's not like Facebook where you can test 30 ads every two weeks. I still recommend you test 30 ads per week on Facebook still, but it's a whole different platform and you have to treat it a little bit different. You cannot treat it the same thing. The mindset needs to change as you go into it. That makes total sense, bro. Even though it seems like it's similar platform, like on the dashboard, even the audience is like totally different. How would you say like, what do you think about this? So there's a lot of, you know how every brand is now copy or not every brand, every social media platform is copying TikTok on their short form yeah. content. Do you think TikTok is going to be sustainable in the long term? Or do you think like every other platform is just going to be basically absorb what TikTok is doing and just kill it over time? I right, repeat that question because like you kind of cut out the last three, five seconds. So I'm asking, you know how every social media platform stole short form content from TikTok and now they're like seeing a lot of success with it. Do you think yeah. because of that, like TikTok isn't as sustainable? No, nah, I don't think so. I think, um, you know, moving into moving now into short term content now. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where we're at right now with like Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts. But I still feel like TikTok is the leader and mm -hmm. it's the fastest platform right now that we have, to be honest. So I think it's going to be a, a pro. Uh, a platform that's going to stay consistent, you know, uh, and it's going to get smarter. It's going to get like Facebook. If you remember Facebook in the beginning, you're mm -hmm. getting these ROASs and stuff like that. Well, same thing with, with uh, TikTok. When it started, everybody was getting crazy ROASs. Now you got to put a little more extra work and effort to get to the, to get to those to get those returns. Mm -hmm. But I do think it's a platform that would remain consistent. I know they're saying they're going to ban it. I doubt it to be honest. They're not going to ban it. I think what's going to happen is that maybe a company in the U.S. is going to buy it on the servers here in, in the states. The server is what owns that holds the data of like the people's information. Mm. I think that's what's going to happen because TikTok supports a lot of different U.S. Uh, businesses. Right. I don't think that you ever, you know, it's just shut something down that supports a lot of U.S. businesses, in my opinion. Uh, but I think it's here to stay. Um, and I think it's here to, you know, continue to make people, you know, millions of dollars. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't think they're going to go anywhere. I think this is still just the beginning in a lot of ways because I still feel the same thing. It, not truly, but I even feel like Meta, for example, is continuing to develop new things, right? And like eventually yeah. they're going to get into VR, like deeper into it. And I mean, I know that's a goofy play right now, but I feel like Zuck understands like where the future is going. And I think it will be like a brilliant play in hindsight. Yeah, yeah once you get to the point, you're going to have to learn how to make VR ads, you know, virtual reality. Right. Yeah. So I wonder how that's going to be play out. It's going to be pretty interesting as, you know, as, uh, as everything, because everything's changing always. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, I'm excited for that. I want to see what kind of ads that people are not going to have to make, you know, maybe the investment will be, have to be bigger because you have to make your ad into a VR technology. So maybe sure. we're going to be able to do that. Like Pepsi, the major companies that make billions of dollars. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Yeah. I wonder how even like social media content will be like, maybe you can record with your AI, like, when you're in it or something like who the fuck knows yeah. and it's gonna, things are things are always going to change bro and this is exciting right we see it with the whole tiktok you know 10 second video clips um but things are always going to change people want that short form who knows it may change back to long form you know and if you notice know on tiktok there's a lot of videos that are now like two minutes long and they're doing mm -hmm. very very well so you know it's it's interesting and, and i'm excited for that yeah, so that's, are you, what are you, what's a general trend you're seeing right now when it comes to actually creatives that are killing it? Is it, do they tend to be all over the place or do you think they hover under like, let's say 15 seconds? Yeah, right now it's like 15, 20 seconds what's working. Uh, and the most, and the more emotion the video has, the better it converts, right? The more, make sure there's a phase involved. You know, mm -hmm. the girl has a phase, she's showing emotion with her voice and her face the mix of that and, and having a product is what works for me at the moment, you know, in the first three, five seconds, right? Whoa, I just got this product. You know what I mean? Uh, what yeah. is it? Explain, explain, explain. Um, so action, uh, showing action, face in the video and emotion in the video, uh, these three things is what converts for us. So find ways to make sure that the person that's making your content has those capabilities. Awesome, bro. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up there. I think we're going to be out of time here soon, but this has been incredible, bro. I'm really happy that we took the time to do this. I appreciate your time and I appreciate you, you know, consistently reminding me to do this as well because I know I hit you up about it and then I yeah. kind of ghosted you for a little bit because I was in Florida. Yeah, the same thing, man. So I'm really happy we did it though. And we'll have to link up whenever I'm in Central Cali. I'll definitely hit you up and you should hit me up if I'm you're ever in the Midwest. Man.
I'm assuming that's where you're going to be at. Mm-hmm. Hit me up. We'll meet up. Awesome, bro. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, well, actually, before we go, do you have any any places you want people to go? I'll obviously link it in the description, but. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, number one, uh, you know, I think where you get more access to me is going to be definitely Instagram. So if you want to go to revenue.express, I'm verified there. Um, definitely check me out on Instagram. Number two is if you guys want to get involved into my community, which is, uh, my discord for teach commerce and you'll put it down the link in the bio. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's, yeah, that's, that's where you guys can reach me out, reach me out and talk to me. If you guys have any questions, I'm happy to help. Awesome, bro. Perfect. Well, that's about it. Hope you have a right. great rest of your day, bro. All right, you too. All right. Later. Peace.